Let's make a raw vegan jalapeno cheddar kale chip. This is going to be a pretty simple recipe. If you've watched my videos, you know I like kale chips. I think there's so many cool recipes you can make with them and it's a super healthy, nutritious snack. I have one bunch of kale here that I've washed and torn and when I tear my kale, I want it to be in about chip sizes. You can already tell that this bowl isn't gonna be big enough though because I'm gonna wanna be able to pour my cheese sauce on top and put my hands in there or use my magic spoon and I don't want the kale falling out. So, much better. The base of this recipe is going to be cashews. I need one half cup soaked. And I would soak them for at least an hour, if not more. And I'll just throw the cashews into the high speed blender and I want them to be on the bottom first because I want to make sure the blades hit the, the cashews before everything else. I'm going to add three carrots in. You don't have to. I, I like the, the combination of carrot, and jalapeno, and cheese. I think that's a good combination and it adds a little bit more nutrition. So I'm just going to take my magic spoon. That is perfect and it's probably going to give you just under one cup. Now the ingredients that are going to give me the cheesy kind of savory taste of cheddar, specifically like a pepper jack cheddar. I have two tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes that I've been soaking in one half cup of water. And sun-dried tomatoes give a nice savory quality. I'm going to have just under one third cup of nutritional yeast and that's where my cheesy flavor is coming from. My spices and some salt. I have a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of smoked paprika, a half teaspoon of dry mustard powder, a half teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, and a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And if you've ever had a pepper jack, maybe at some point you weren't being getting like I was, and you notice those red specks of red pepper in the cheese. Well now I'd much rather eat this over pepper jack. I'm just gonna place those in. The juice of one lime. I'm using lime because I thought lime would go really well with carrot. And you want some sort of acid in this recipe. And so you could use two tablespoons of lemon juice. You could even use apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of that after this. So two tablespoons. Limes are pretty much all the same size and it's about two tablespoons of lime juice. If you're going to use lemon or apple cider vinegar, you're going to want to measure two tablespoons. One tablespoon of chickpea miso. I like chickpea miso because it's not as strong as a flavor and it doesn't affect the color of the recipe because it's not a dark miso. Jalapenos, you could use fresh of course. And how much you put in is really up to you depending on the spiciness. I'm going to put in, let's say, almost two tablespoons. And remember, there's also crushed red pepper, so that's going to add some spice too. One teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, just a teaspoon. If you were using apple cider vinegar instead of lemon juice or lime juice, I would use just two tablespoons not the extra teaspoon. Now I just gotta pop on my lid and blend this up. I'm gonna pour this on, this cheese sauce on top, and I like to put a little bit on top first and then kinda take the kale from the bottom. Get that up top, and you could really do this however you wanted. You could just dump all of it in at once, and then use your hands. I like to use a spatula and sort of paint the kale, as you might say, with my spatula and just kind of cover it up and then get underneath the kale and then toss it around. You just want to stir this 
or use your hands and massage the kale and get it to the point where the kale is evenly coated. Now you wanna take two Teflex dehydrator sheets and line your kale up. And two just seems to be the magic number for kale chips. The combination of the nutritional yeast, the carrot, and the turmeric makes this really beautiful golden color. These are really pretty. They're gonna be pretty delicious too. And you can see because we're using curly kale that they stand up and this gives me more room to lay out chips. If you were gonna use dino kale or flat leaf kale, you have to lay it on the sheet and then it just takes up more room and it doesn't dehydrate as well. There it is, I've covered two sheets. I'm gonna pop them in the dehydrator I'd say 12 hours would pretty, be pretty good. There's not a ton of wet ingredients, just the carrots, so these are gonna dehydrate faster than some of the other recipes. I'm gonna give you a close-up of what they look like now just so you can see the really nice color, and then I'll show you what they look like when they come out. My kale chips are done, and I have this huge pile of these golden, cheesy, jalapeno, crunchy kale chips. I like these because there's not a ton of ingredients. Like in the barbecue ones, there's dates and sun-dried tomatoes and whatever nut or seed you chose, and that creates a coating that's gonna make them a very chewy chip. Because you basically just have cashews and the flavoring, these are gonna have a crunchiness to them and they have that snapping quality. So if you like a crunchy chip, then this is the recipe that you'd wanna to go to. They have a great cheesy flavor, a little bit spicy because of the jalapeno and the crushed red pepper. You can certainly up that. I personally will next time because I like a lot of heat. And just look at how much you get from that recipe. You get way more than if you were gonna buy these in the store and it doesn't take very long except for waiting for them to dehydrate. It did take only about 12 hours if you like kale chip recipes and you want to see more of these or more recipes in the dehydrator, let me know down below. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next recipe. For, I'd say a couple hours.